How's it going everybody? I'm Jesse with Black Lab Outdoors and on this week's episode we're going to be installing a brand new helical cutter head from find, findbytool.com in the DeWalt 735-735X and we're going to be testing it out with some um, edge grain maple cutting boards, some end grain cutting boards, and some old growth rough cut lumber that more than likely at some point in time was used as um, on scaffolding for a walk and there was some concrete on it I did the best I could to brush get it brushed off with a nylon brush and my sawzall but we'll see how the cutter head handles it and then we're gonna go over the features and the price point of this cutter head all right, so we're gonna go over the tools that are needed for the installation of the new helical cutter head. So we gotta take the old straight knife cutter head out. Um, first off, you're gonna need your DeWalt tool that came, your wrench that came with the machine. If for some reason you lost this, this size is a T30. So you can get a T30 star bit and that, that is the same size as the DeWalt. You're also going to need a 4 millimeter Allen wrench and a 5 millimeter, a 24 millimeter socket with a socket wrench or an impact wrench if you want, piece of hardwood to help loosening the nut that the socket's for, mallet just in case, pair of snap ring pliers. I had to buy these ones are internal, external. Um, these just happen to cost me like 18 bucks at my local store. You can I'm sure you can find them cheaper at like Harbor Freight or a big box store or something like that. Uh, you're going to need, they give you two of these Allen wrenches for the carbide insert knives, the actual knives for the cutter head. So we have our tools. Now we're going to start taking a, taking the machine apart and we're going to start with taking the lid off of it. So I'm just going to use the T30 star drive bit taking this stuff off. Remember these these bolts here, these screws, these are captured so they're not going to come all the way out. This process here is just the same as if you're going to be changing out your straight blade knives. So next we're going to be in here taking out these red wing nuts. Next we're going to take this lid here and we're going to rotate it up and then over and that pops right out. So again we're going to set these this over here. Bring our tool over. Um, so this little spring guide here we're going to rotate rotate it until it locks. So it's locked in there. Now I, I wouldn't suggest uh, installing the cutter any of the cutter heads with a drill or an impact or anything like that. But since we're going to be taking these out and we're replacing the cutter head, I'm going to use my impact. But if I was just changing out the blades, then I, I would take the, the screws out with the driver, the impact driver. And then as far as installing, I put my impact on a very low setting. This one has three different settings. And I put it down at number one and I would very carefully drive it in. And then finish hand tightening, tightening it 
with the hand tool. Because what you do not want to do is strip out the holes when you're installing. Cross thread them or anything like that. Or damage the blades or the retention plate. So we use a tool, bring out the retention plate. Sorry for the noise, the background noise with the dog. He is, he's seen the neighbor's cat, goat, or chicken or whatever. And he gets awfully excited over that stuff. So we're going to push down the retention spring here and rotate the cutter head until it's locked in place. And we're just going to repeat this two more. We're going to remove this tensioner, the, the spring right here that you, it goes up and down um, and it locks the blade in place when you're changing it. Hopefully you can, you know, you can see that. Uh, this tool I didn't go over in the beginning. It's a Phillips P2. Oh, there we go. And there's a spring in here, a captured spring. So you want to be careful when you're removing this. And you want to put good pressure on this because you don't want to strip the screws out, the head of the screw. Because it's got a little bit of Loctite on it and I don't... There's that spring. It's just captured on a little detent there. The next step is removing the hand wheel. Now again, you can, I'm just going to use the provided tool. And there's a bolt, there's a bolt in the washer that just slides right off. And we're going to set this over here. That way that's there. The box cover over here. And I'll turn the cart so you can see it. Again, still. It's really nice that DeWalt made a bunch of these screws the same size. I mean, that's, that's always a plus and helpful. A little forethought goes a long way. So the next thing we're going to do, there's a tension spring right here, right there. It keeps tension on the chain here. We're going to unhook that. We'll get a pair of needle nose pliers real quick. You could also use the needle nose for 
to replace the instead of using the the snap ring pliers There's that. Next, we're going to remove these screws right here. We're for these sprockets. Uh, all right, so we're to our next tool. And those are four millimeter. Okay, now we're going to remove the sprockets and the chain at one time here. And it just slides out just like that. Each sprocket has a little keyway in it. There, It's attached to the sprocket so you don't have to worry about losing it. So we're going to take this, set it off to the side. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is take this, rotate this V-belt. I'm going to press it down. And start rotating it out. You gotta be careful, watch your fingers. Alright, there it's go. It's starting to come off. So what I did there to help with that, I stuck this finger, my pointer finger, back. I'm pushing this way with it as I'm pulling down on the belt with my other hand. And then you're just gonna keep on rotating that and pulling now I'm not really suggesting you do this but so you want to take a piece of hardwood and stick it in there like that and that way it's a wedge so when you pull the take the nut off I'm going to use my impact wrench because my my socket wrench it I don't have the adapter that fits it so sp spun that right up next we're gonna pull the pulley off And there is a key in there. Be that th little thing right there. You can see the corresponding slot right there that fits it in there and, and locks it in. So the next part, we're going to remove this side cover here. Again, we're going to use the provided tool by DeWalt. Next, and next we're going to use the snap ring pliers. There's a snap ring on each of these sprockets right here. So, again, if you wanted to, you could use a set of players to do this, but So again, what we're going to do is disconnect the spring to the tensioner on this side, which is right here. I'm just going to take my needle nose, 
pull the spring over and let it hang just like that. Next, we're going to, again, we're going to move the chain and sprockets together. Just like that. And again, it has a built-in keyway in it. So we're going to set these away from the chain and sprockets on the other side. That way they don't get confused. Oh, and this one did have a... A washer on the inside that came off, came with the came off with the sprocket. So just just so you know, so you don't lose it. I'm gonna put the snap rings over here with it as well. That way they're together. And that washer was on the right on the right side of that. Okay, so we're going to remove these three socket head screws right here. And this is where the five millimeter wrench comes in. These are long bolts, so that means this whole gearbox here is going to come out. You don't pull it out all the way, you just pull it far enough. That way you can get in here and tap the cutter head out of, out of the machine. So we'll just kind of wiggle this back and forth. Get it rotated a little bit just like that, and that way we have a good shot into the cutter head. So before you go trying to hammer the cut the old cutter head out, on the side you pulled the pulley off of, make sure you get this snap ring over here. There's a washer there too. There we go. One OEM cutter head. So next we're going to unscrew this piece here. So once you have the head out, you can use an adjustable wrench like this if you want to. I happen to have on hand uh, a very small, I think this is a six millimeter wrench and that fits on there perfectly and you just rotate that out and you will install it on the new helical cutter head from findbytool.com and this is at the, and this is the point where if you're going to reuse your bearings, 
you'd be taking these off as well. But since I purchased a helical head with the bearings pre-installed, just so I didn't have to do that, helical cutter head, and this is the helical drive gear, helical gear, and we're gonna install that. on the new head just like that So we're going to take the new cutter head. All right, that might be in there far enough. So we're going to take the screw that was, or the washer that was in there, and then the snap ring. Get these reinstalled. There we go. So that's in there. All right. Now I'm just going to reverse everything. All right. The cutter head is in there, and we're going to start start the start reassembling this. So pretty much, you can just go in reverse order. So what we're going to do is get the gearbox back in place. Just like that. And you're going to want to make sure this section here, there's a little bolt, there's a little piece that comes off this rod. It gets locked in here and then right in here too. So we'll take a quick look at the case that comes in. These are really nice, nice plastic sleeve. Uh, it only comes out one way. It's got a little locking nub on it. And these are all individually packed in there. Look really nice. So let's uh, slide this back in just enough so I can get one knife out. Oh, would you end? Hopefully, we'll get that on there. But it's got numbers and an indexing dot. So, that's awesome. That way you can keep track. So what I've been doing is I take it and put the, the screw into the, the knife. And then I hold it, pinch it like that. 
And then what I found easiest was when you're going to put the screw in, you find the hole and you kind of press it in a little bit. Otherwise, it likes to wobble around and just just like that. And it'll give you fits. At least it did me until I got it down. So, it is not recommended, again, to use a driver of any type, whether it's just a drill or an impact driver, to put these in. You should use the supplied wrench to put this in but this is what I'm doing I'm using an M12 uh, it's a Milwaukee fuel impact driver I have the setting on one and all I do is I just slowly feather that down in there and I as you I'm just feathering the trigger a little bit and like you can't I'm not impacting it you can't hear it impacting or anything like that and then I just take the supplied wrench and give it a good snug up because these aren't gonna go as soon as they're bottomed out they're bottomed out and that's as tight as they're gonna get what they don't want you doing is running those screws down in there because you could strip out the threads mess up the the top of the screw strip it out you could break the cutter heads. You could do all sorts of stuff after you just spent all this time installing this head. And then you'd have to take it all back apart and get a new one. But they're not going to, they won't help you out if you go through and do something dumb like that. Because that is user error and not de a defect. See how it sticks? You push it down and get it sticking in the hole and then just rotate it a couple times. And I'm indexing all my dots to the lower would be in the camera view would be lower right. So again, I'm gonna take my impact and just slowly take it, take the screw down just like that, and just feather it a little bit get it out and then watch the watch the wrench here just turn it a little bit just like that it's bound them out and that's as tight as it's going to get so I installed all 56 knives which I believe is more than any other head on the market so besides it being a cheaper price for the for the cutter head itself, on top of it, you have your you're getting more money per per knife than the other heads out there, which is pretty cool. So you're getting a really good value with this heel cutter head. And that's it. That is the installation. So, set you back up over here. And just to function test it real quick. I'm just going to plug it in and turn it on. Make sure nothing catastrophic happens before I try to send a piece of wood in there. I'm not sure if that's any it's quieter than the other head or not but um, 
we're going to test it out tomorrow because it's getting a little too late in the evening for me to be messing with it. So, so this is the install video. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching because the length of it, we're going to keep, I'm going to keep this one separate and I'm going to do a um, test video as far as putting it through its paces. So again, thanks for watching the install video. I appreciate it. Uh, don't forget there's going to be a link in the description where you can buy your own and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.